bless you today. Amen. All right, I want to go to the word this morning. Uh, just so glad to have my son home, my oldest son home today. And uh, he has helped us with our narrative on how we broke our ankles. And uh, we, you know, we get tired of telling the true story that our wife and our mother actually broke it when we were talking back to her. And so Titan helped us come up with a story that we were in an elevator together and it was, it was crashing. The elevator had come loose. And so we decided to just break one leg and lift it up our right leg and we broke our left. So that's the best we could come up with as far as our narrative goes this morning. Amen. But God is good, isn't he? <clears throat> Amen. How many know God is good? Amen. Never let us down. He's never forsaken us. What an incredible, awesome God we serve this morning. Amen. I just want to uh, just go to, uh, we got two chapters we're going to read this morning, so we're not going to actually read scriptures to begin with, but I just want to pray over God's word this morning. Would you help me ask God to open up your heart and your, your mind this morning and your spirit today? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. And we worship you, Lord. And we ask you, God, to just bless your word this morning. I got a bunch of notes on a piece of paper this morning, but God, only you can bring it all together for, our, for what we're going to venture into this morning. Got an incredible story. Got an incredible story about the lives of people that are so complicated. But God, we are complicated also. And you have, you're a God that can straighten out complications and messes, Lord. And we give you the praise for what you're going to do in your incredible word this morning. Amen. Praise God. Turn around and shake your neighbor's hand and bless them with your fellowship here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So good to have everybody in church this morning. Amen. You're the people that I love so very much. You mean so much to me this morning. Amen. God bless you. One more time before you see to give the Lord a standing ovation of praise. Lift up that roof this morning. Good to have Stephanie home this morning. Isn't it great? All right. All right. Amen. We love her very, very much. Sister Celeste, good to have you also this morning. Good to have you home from Hawaii. Amen. God bless you this morning. Now, I want to talk. You made me seated. I want to talk about a... Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Uh, I was telling Brother uh, Arthur about my title this morning. I, it's, it's called Torn Between Two Lovers. And he says, Brother Mar, that sounds like a, that sounds like a novel. Well, actually, it is a novel. What I'm going to read to you this morning is really a very incredible novel found in the Word of God. And it's going to surprise you. Uh, uh, and I'm just going to read a lot of scriptures. We've got a lot to read, so we'll get right to it this morning. But uh, I want to just talk, just you know, continue our seri on, series on Jacob. And, you know, as we've described the last few weeks, we're talking about complications. Because when we read the characters of the Bible, we found out that these characters are very complicated. And, and, it, and they're not just perfect. Everything's not perfectly laid out, you know, like our lives are not laid out. And these guys made incredible mistakes, and we make incredible mistakes. These guys were forgiven, and we have been forgiven. And these guys have, you know, different, you know, guys and late, uh, gen ladies and gentlemen of the Scriptures have incredible uh, uh, differences in their lives, and they all come together, and, it's, and it, sometimes it blows up, and sometimes it weaves together. And, it, and it's just a mess sometimes. And when I look at our lives, our lives are a mess. And then probably if I polled this crowd this morning, uh, we would find out that if, if we lifted our hands, most of you say that I've got a mess in my life and, and I need some help. And, and, it, and maybe it's not spiritual, but maybe it's physical, maybe it's financial, maybe it's emotional, maybe it is spiritual. And, and we find that that is true and that the Word of God was written for a reason. And, and, and that reason is that it would help us in 2015 to have better lives. And, and so I'm just going to read some scriptures to you this morning. We're going to go right to it in Genesis chapter 29 in the NIV version. Uh, we're going to read two chapters today while I preach. But the word of God says, then Jacob went on his journey. And, and just right there you can stop and say, you know, life is a journey. And, and you know, it has a beginning. We don't know necessarily where it's going to end, but it's a journey. And he came to the land of the people of the east. And verse 2 says that there he saw a well in the open country and with three flocks of sheep lying near it because the flocks were watering from the well. Uh, we'll go to verse number, uh, at the end of verse number 2, uh, uh, Brother uh, Arthur. The stone over the mouth of the well was very large. And I want you to notice that. It says it was very large. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. 
And when all the flocks, uh, Brother Arthur, could you roll that scripture for me to ver verse number three, if you don't mind? We're just going to, if you could just keep that right on the uh, right, just keep that arrow popping this morning. That'll be probably the best thing to do uh, as we read through scriptures. The stone over the mouth of the well was large. And when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds rolled the stone away from the well's mouth and the water and, and water the sheep. Then they would return to the stone to its place over the mouth of the well. Is this not happening this morning? Amen. I'm going to just wait on you. To, if you can get those scriptures for us, Brother Arthur. Is it just not happening? Or Okay, no, no problem. We can work through that. Let's just stand and pray. We're going to ask God to, because if we don't have these scriptures today, we're going to be in real trouble. Amen. So just stand and help me pray over these scriptures this morning. Amen. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just ask you to touch these scriptures today that are on our Teletron, that we might see them. Because they're very important for this, the context of our message this morning. We ask you to just bless them. In Jesus' name, Lord, open up the pathway to your word so that people can be blessed through your scriptures today. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen? All right, now put your hands together because now God has, has, did it, has done it for us. Amen. Amen. Certainly not. Amen. It's not Brother Arthur's fault at all. It's just, you know, just the way things happen sometimes. So let's look at these scriptures. Amen? Say, everybody say, read the scriptures. Now, verse 4, Jacob asked the shepherds, my brothers, where are you from? They said, we are from Harahan. Uh, they replied, he said to them, do you know Laban, Nahor's grandson? Yes, we know him, they answered. Then Jacob asked them, is he well? Yes, he is, they said. And here comes his daughter, Rachel, with the sheep. Look, he said, the sun is still high. Is it not time for the flocks to be gathered? Water the sheep and take them back to the pasture. I want to stop right there. There's nothing, how many of you know there's nothing like somebody new coming into your situation and telling you what to do? Especially when you've never met them. You don't know what they know and they don't know what you know, but instantly they start telling you what to do. Now I know that if somebody comes into my life like that, it is just, it is just very irritating. And that's exact, exactly what Jacob was. Verse 8 says, we can't, there, or they said in verse 8, we can't, they replied, until all the flocks are gathered, amen, and the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the well, then, they said, we will water the sheep. In other words, why don't you just keep your mouth shut? Let me interpret this more. Why don't you just keep your mouth shut, and why don't you let us take care of our business, and you take care of your business? That's what they were saying to him. But while he was still talking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherd. Amen. She was a shepherd. When Jacob saw Rachel's daughter of Uncle Laban and Laban's sheep, he went over, watch this, and he rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and watered his uncle's sheep. Now I want you to notice this in Scripture this morning. Previously I read to you that the stone over the well was very large. In other words, it seemed like it took the whole, all the herdsmen to take it and move it. But how many of you know that when a beautiful woman comes on the scene, that a young man can do anything he wants to do because he gets this inspiration that comes from God? <laughs> and he got so inspired and wanted to show off so bad, Sister Mary, Sister Mary that he took that, that, whoa, that rock all by himself and he moved that rock off the, to, off the top of the well and said, come on up here and water your sheep. All right? Just like men will do. Jacob was just like somebody at the gym when a beautiful girl comes in. Some of you young cats are there lifting weights. And you see a, young, a, a beautiful girl come in and you say, put another 45 on the pole. Right? Because you want to show off your muscles. And that's exactly what he was doing. Verse 11. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and began to weep aloud. Verse 12. He had told Rachel that he was a relative of her father and a son of Rebekah. So, he, so she ran and told her father. Verse 13 says, as soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he hurried to meet him. He embraced him and kissed him. Look at this. This is the same one that's going to cause him a lot of trouble. He embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his home. And there Jacob told him all these things. Then Laban said to him, you are my flesh and my blood. Now I want to stop right there and tell you this. Just because, I'm going to give you some principles that can really help your life this morning. Learn it from my experience. But learn it also from Jacob's experience. Just because a person kisses and hugs you, 
doesn't mean they're good for you. Amen. Let me say it another way. Just because, a, just because a person is good to you doesn't mean they're good for you. You better learn that from these scriptures this morning because it will really help you out. Because we know later on that this man totally turned the tables on Jacob. After Jacob had stayed with him for a whole month, Laban said to him, Just because you are a relative of mine, he's going to come off nice. He's going to act like he's concerned about Jacob. It doesn't mean you've got to work for nothing. Tell me what your wages should be. Now Laban, the Bible says, had two daughters. And we just met one of them. The name of the older was Leah. And the name of the younger was Rachel. Now watch this. I want you to notice the scripture stops and points out a flaw in Leah. It says, now Leah had, in verse, uh, now in the next verse. Leah had weak eyes. But Rachel was lovely in form and beautiful. Now, I, I, we, I looked up this word, weak eyes. In the translation, it means that she was sort of like had weak eyes and they were sort of cross-eyed. So, here is two sisters. One of them is incredibly beautiful, has an incredible look about her. You young guys would say a hot body. And this other has weak eyes and cross-eyed. Very distractive, but the Bible mentions it for a reason this morning. Verse 18 says, Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, first of all, you learn this, young men, he really got in love really quick. Slow your love down. Hey, man, take your time. He just met her like five minutes ago, and now he's in love with her, right? He's ready to take her to Sonic and get her a chili dog with cheese on it, right? And Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, I'll work, watch this, I will, he is so in love, he's willing to trade seven years of his life. I found these scriptures fascinating. He says, I will work for you seven years in return for your younger daughter, Rachel. You know, when you love somebody, it ain't work. How many know that? When you're in love with somebody, it's just not work anymore. It's fun. It's like, man, I love this. I'll do anything because I love that girl, right? Now, Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than some other man. Stay here with me. So the verse 20 says, so Jacob served seven years to get Rachel. And this is the most romantic scripture you could possibly read probably in scriptures. The last part of this verse says, but they seemed like only a few days to him because of his love for her. Don't, don't change it just yet. So he says, man, Uncle Laban, I want you to know right now that it don't even seem like work because I am so in love with her. Super romantic, right? How many ladies would say he's a super romantic guy? Seven years doesn't seem like anything. But then he becomes a real guy in the next verse. Look at this. He all, he, after all, he is a guy. He said, then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed and I want to lie with her. Young ladies, don't ever forget the real intentions of every man is the last part of this verse. He might, bring, he might bring you roses, Sister Jennifer. He might bring you roses, but the bottom line on this verse is right there is the bottom line. And let's just be real this morning. It's right there in scriptures. Amen. Praise God. He said, give me my wife. My time is coming. I want another translation. Says, I want to make love with her, actually. Verse 22. So Laban brought together all the people of the place and gave a feast. Now, I want to just stop right there and say this. There must have been a lot of alcohol present at this marriage ceremony. Because when I read to you the next verse in just a minute, you're going to find out he, they, they had to, I'm, now the scripture doesn't say it, but you've got to read between the lines. Because he don't even realize he's with the wrong girl. Right? So, and let's look at, look, at the, let's look at the next verse, verse 23. But when evening came, he took his daughter Leah, the cross-eyed one. Y'all think this is funny because he didn't. But, amen, and brought her to Jacob. And watch this. Jacob was so messed up. The scripture says he made love with her. I don't know what version you're in, brother. But mine said he made love with her. You're good, brother. Now, let me ask you this. How drunk do you have to be to make love to the wrong girl on your wedding night and she's got cross eyes? 
<laughs> and the sister is knockout beautiful. Right? And Laban gave his servant Zilpha to his daughter as her attendant. Now watch this. When morning came, amen, look at the scripture. There was exclamation mark Leah. Hey, did you notice that exclamation point? Amen. So Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, didn't I? Why have you deceived me? Now watch this. Jacob had worked seven years to take Rachel and his wife. However, he woke up to find himself lying next to Leah. Jacob, the trickster, had finally been tricked. Which goes back to the scripture that says, we sow what we reap. Right? If we live a lie, we eventually wake up lying next to Leah. <laughs> Y'all think that's funny because Jacob sure didn't. We work for one thing, but we wake up next to something else. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. God will not be mocked. We can live a lie. We can tell our parents we're at one place and really at another place. But God in the end will have the final say on what we are doing in our life. Come on, somebody, if you believe it this morning. Amen. God will not be mocked if we live a lie and know that God has called us but we pretend to be something else. God will in the final end of everything have the say. If we live a lie, hang out with one crowd, but we're supposed to be with another crowd, in the end, God will not be mocked, and we will get what we put in the ground. It may be okay for a while, but you cannot fool God. God knows our footsteps. God knows what time we got up this morning. God knows what time we go to bed. God cannot be mocked, and God and will not be fooled. Come on, somebody. Praise Him this morning. Do you believe what I'm talking about? Let me tell you this. You know what? Who else can't be fooled? You know, the, you know another person that can't be fooled? It's you. You can't even fool yourself. Because morning will come. And you're going to roll over and go, oh. You see, because Leah might look good in her, under the influence. At the club, 101, if that's still the club. It might look good when you're, when you're drinking jack stuff. But I want you to know in the end, you're going to wake up and she's going to be cross-eyed. Looking at you going, you the man. <laughs> hey, big boy. What's up? We had a great time last night. <laughs> because let me tell you what, what you put in the ground is going to come out of the ground and morning comes on every situation. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. See, don't take shortcuts is what I'm preaching this morning. Because I'm going to tell you a story about a builder, a famous builder. He had a crew that worked for him. And he had, all his life he had built tremendous homes and buildings for the government and for people. And one day it got time for him to retire. And as he was about to retire, he said, we're going to build one more home. And the home was magnificent and the plans were intricate and detailed. And so he gave it to his chief builder and says, I want you to build this, this one last home. And so they began to build. But it was so intricate and so delicate that they become frustrated and they started cutting corners and they didn't put everything they needed to put in the foundation. And they built the pillars out of materials that they normally didn't go with because they were trying to get finished with it and get the last job over with and get on with their lives. 
And they finished the building. And it was about, you know, it wasn't as good as some of the buildings they had built in their life. And, and at the end, the, the, the famous builder says, all right, you finished the building. Now here, take the keys because it's your house. Just remember that you are building your house. You are putting your own house together. And whatever foundation you establish. And whatever pillars you put in the wall. And whatever studs you put in the wall. And whatever roof you put on. It is your house. Don't cut the corners. Live by the word of God. Live by what is true and right and just in your life. Amen. Amen. Verse 26. Laban replied. It is not our. Now he's going to come out with all the formulas. He could have told him this in the beginning. It is not our custom to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, and then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. And the word of God says, and so Jacob did so. He finished the week with Leah, and then he, Laban gave his daughter Rachel to be his wife. Laban, the word of God says that and Laban gave his daughter Rachel to, to be his wife and Laban gave his servant Belha to his daughter Rachel as an attendant. Jacob made love to Rachel also. His love for Rachel was greater than his love for Leah and he worked for Laban another seven years. I want to give you some concepts here this morning that Leah's life represents the law. That you know, and, and, and numbers and the, and the, and the seven is the, is, the, is the number of perfection. And Jacob worked seven years in order to get Leah. And it represents the Old Testament covenant. It represents the old covenant that God had with man. You work and then you get God. You do all the rules and then you get God. But Rachel represents the grace period in the word of God. The New Testament. Because he, see, he got Leah at the end of seven years. But the word says he got Rachel and then he worked seven years. Which means you get Christ and you get God first and then you are provided grace. And then you're so in love with God that you're willing to work the rest of your life and to serve him no matter what comes or goes. Amen. Amen. You see, because we live not under the law, but we live under grace. And it's not about law anymore, but it's about grace. It's not about guilt, but it's about mercy and love and forgiveness in our life. Amen. Amen. I want to give you two words this morning. I want to give you approval and achievement. Approval and achievement. You might, might write those words down. Because we live most of our lives for these two words, approval and achievement. We're always after somebody's approval, right? And we think that if we make another A, or that if we, or that if we perform well in the 40-yard the, the, the dash in high school, that somebody's going to like us. And we think that if we, we do something for somebody else, we, we wear a certain type of clothing, and we are part of a certain crowd. We're going to be, have approval and achievement in our life. We think that if we have a certain car, that people in our neighborhood is going to respect us. We think that if we get a new house, that the rest of our family is going to appreciate it for us. And, and our lives are lived on these two words, approval and achievement. And, 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 and this is the, what drove these two women that I'm going to read their scriptures this morning. They were trying, constantly trying to be, have approval and achievement in their life. And I want to give you verse 31. It's a very powerful scripture because it says, When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. I want you to just look at that scripture this morning. Because I praise God. Sister Sissy, I praise God today that we serve a God that sees when people are not loved. And I'm preaching to a crowd this morning. And I'm preaching to a church today that some of you are sitting here and you don't have love in your life. But that we serve a God that when everybody else has turned on you, we serve a God that loves you and that is willing to look inside of you. He doesn't look at your cross eyes. He doesn't look at how beautiful you are. But He loves you just because He's your God. And He wants to pour Himself into you. I'm so glad 
that God sees people that are not loved. And I'm so glad that God cares. Amen. Please, church, don't, don't let's never become a church that doesn't love the unloved. They've already been kicked. They've already been beaten. They already have two broke ankles. Love them. Don't kick them when they're down. Don't find a reason why that they've been cursed. Look for a re reason why you can bless them. Don't look at your neighbor and see they're down and go out like, like they did like they did in the Old Testament. They, 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 looked, at the, they looked at the prophet and they said he, he's, he's done something wrong. He's been cursed and he must curse God and die. No, be one that blesses them. Be one that loves them. Be a church that has the love of God in them. We ought to do it because God looks for people that are not loved. See, God has a way of selecting what man rejects. I want to give you a, a principle this morning, and I got it in my notes, but it says, are you living with rejection, but filled with expectation? In other words, I'm preaching about Leah right here this morning, because she's constantly being rejected. She's constantly trying to win the approval of her husband, but he doesn't love her. But she's constantly has babies. She has babies in her womb constantly trying to please him. She has baby after baby trying to please him. She's always expecting. And some of you have been rejected, but your life still has expectation in it. And you're still trying to please people. You're, you're still expecting to find fulfillment in other people. But I'm telling you this morning, you will never find that in people. Leah was not loved by Jacob, but she kept trying. She strove to win his love by bearing him many sons. She even gave Jacob her maidservant to get more sons for him because she thought that would make him happy. But even after all her striving, Jacob still didn't love her. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, no matter what you give the world, it will never love you. It will always require you to do one more thing in order to fit into the crowd, in order to have love. Amen. The world will say one more party and we'll love you. But it doesn't work. One more drink and we'll love you. One more drug and we'll love you. One more this and that and we'll love you. One more wild fling and we'll love you. But it will never love you. We try to earn acceptance through achievements. We think that maybe the next job we do, the people will be happy with the way we did it. We try hard to be perfect, be perfect, have perfection in our life, but somebody always finds something wrong even though we thought it was perfect. And we think that if we make another A, that it's that is going to make people appreciate us and think that we're smart, but it doesn't work that way, brothers and sisters. Doing the next thing. If we do that next thing, they'll finally accept us. That parent will finally think we're as good as the other kid in our family. But let me tell you what, what Jacob rejects is what God selects. Amen. Amen. See, when God saw that Leah was not loved, he opened up her womb and allowed her to have children. See, God looks at what people don't want and says, I choose you. Amen. Amen. We have flaws and we have defects among us. We, there's nobody that's perfect here today. You can look in the mirror and determine that for yourself. None of us are perfect. But I'm here to tell you what the world rejects. God chooses and says, I want to use you for the glory of the kingdom of God. I want to take your womb and I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to make something beautiful come out of you. Rejection is not a dead end, but it's a redirection in our life. Amen. Isaiah says that Jesus was despised and rejected. Why was he despised and rejected? He was despised and rejected so that you and I could be accepted among the hallways of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
You see, when God brings, when the Lord brings, when he brought his only begotten son to a generation, he, he chose the womb of Leah. And I'm going to bring it to you at the end of this message. I'm going to bring to you her story in just a moment. See, we are a chosen people. Let me tell you something. Leah was, was not pretty on the outside. She had weak eyes, cross-eyed. She didn't have a pretty look about her. But I want you to know, both of Jacob's wives had something that he loved, that he wanted. One gave him children but had no looks. The other one was beautiful but could bear no children. And each of the women had something the other one didn't have. One was beautiful but could have no children. One was ugly but could have many children. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Don't ever look at somebody that's beautiful and think they've got it all together. Don't ever look at somebody that you admire and that seems like they're the one that gets all the promotions and everything else and look at them and say, I want to be like them. Because I can promise you the people you think are successful and beautiful, there's nights where they go home and they cry themselves to sleep at night because there's something they don't have that you have. Because know this, that God puts something in every person that's beautiful. God opened up the womb of Leah and that was beautiful to him. And he says, I will put babies inside of you and they will be the generation of the Messiah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Because we'll find out that, in one, that one of her sons was named Judah. And Judah is the name for praise. And that Judah came from Leah. So the Messiah came through the cross-eyed one. The Messiah came through the one that was weak and that was ugly on the outside. But the Lord said, she's beautiful on the inside. I want my only begotten son to come through her lineage. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, God has something in everybody that's beautiful. Because Rachel had a son. Later we'll find out his name was Joseph. And Joseph went to Egypt through a roundabout way. But if it wouldn't have been for Joseph, the whole band would have been wiped out. So one had the Messiah's lineage. The other saved the Messiah's lineage. I'm here to preach this morning that no matter what your neighbor thinks or your father thinks or your mother thinks or somebody in your family thinks about you or your teacher, I'm here to say there's something beautiful in you. There's something God put in you that somebody else doesn't have. He's here to bless you today. He's here to choose you this morning. He's here to choose you this morning. We are, look at your neighbor and say, we are a chosen people. Amen. Verse 32 says, Leah became pregnant. I'm going to give you this is a really wild story. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and she named him Reuben. Watch this. For she said, it is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. Let me tell you what. You're going to find out through her story, you can never make me unhappy. And we can... We can also adjust the narrative this morning and say men and women happy. You will never make mankind happy, no matter what you do. See, question is, who are you trying to get lo to love you? See, Leah, who are you trying to get to love you, your husband or God? Verse 33, she conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again, she could see verse 34. She just, she's like, wow, this is pretty cool. I got a little bit of attention from me. So I'm just going to keep having babies. She conceived. And when she gave birth to a son, she said, Now, at last, my husband will become attached to me. Because I have borne him three sons. So she named him Levi. Didn't work, though. It lasts for a little while. Because that's the way affections of men and women last just for a little while. Amen. Verse 35, she conceived again. And when she gave birth to a son, this time she says, I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judas. So she said, you know what? This time I'm just going to praise the Lord. Don't you find it amazing that that's the son that God said, I will send my only begotten son through. The one that she gave praise to him for. 
See, brothers and sisters, that's when the real harvest comes in your life. That's when, the, that's, when the, that's when something lovely and beautiful comes out of your life. Is when you stop trying to do it for men and women and you start doing it for God. And you say, I will praise God. And though I'm in the, hey, though he slay me, uh, said Job, I, yet I will trust him. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of doubt, I will never leave my God. I will never forsake him. I will always love him and trust in him. And the Bible says, then she stopped having children for a little while. She says, you know what? I'm just going to work. I'm going to worry about God. Let me give you some advice. Always worry about what God thinks. That's the most important thing you can do. Let me ask you a question. Are you filled with frustration but living with acceptance? In other words, I'm preaching about Ray, Rachel in my notes. Hey, man, you are, hey, you are filled with frustration but living with acceptance. In other words, people like you on the outside, but on the inside, you are dying on the inside, and you are just about to die because you are barren. Rachel, the Bible says, had a lovely figure in the next verse, but she struggled greatly with frustration because she had a barren womb. Genesis chapter 30, verse number 1 says, When Rachel saw... That she was not bearing Jacob any children. She became jealous of her sister. And she said to Jacob, give me children or I will die. Amen. I'll say it again. Just because a person is beautiful on the outside doesn't mean that they are just dying on the inside. Beautiful on the outside but bare on the inside. Gorgeous outwardly. Something horrible is going on in the inside. Idolized. In the public, but paralyzed in their home. See, some of us are envious of other people. But God says, don't be that way. Praise me. Give me the glory. Give me the honor. Verse number two. Jacob became angry with her and said, am I in the place of God who has kept you from having children? Am I the one that's caused this? Am I the one that you're trying to please? No, you should redirect your attention to God. Amen. Now I want you to notice it. In these scriptures, we're going to find out that each of these women start trying to outdo the other. They start trying to outdo each other. And, I don't, and I'm here to tell you this morning, the worst contest you can get in in your life is a place where you're trying to outdo somebody else in your family, some of your friends, where it's all about comparisons. See, God loved them for what they were, but they never would accept that. And verse 3 says, then she says, here is Bella. She says, okay, so I can't have children, so I'll give you my servant. Bella, sleep with her so that she can bear children for me. And I too can build a family through her. So she gave him her servant Bella as a wife. And watch this, Jacob took one for the team. And he said, the Bible says, and I think about old Jacob, he's about all over the place, isn't he? And the word of God says, and so I'm getting some pretty stiff looks here this morning. The young people are kind of liking this. The old people are like, whoa, wait a second. I'm about to break his other leg. But I'm just reading you the scriptures. And Jacob slept with her and she became pregnant and bore him a son. Then Rachel said, God has vindicated me. Really? Was it God or was it you? Was it God's plan for you to give your servant or was it your plan? Right? You ever notice how we always get all, all out of sorts when we have our plan come undone? God has vindicated me. He has listened to my plea and given me a son. Because of this, she named him Dan. Rachel's servant, watch this. Jacob's like, whoo, wow, this is pretty good. I got all kinds of women everywhere. So Bella is conceived again. And bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel, Rachel says, I have had a great struggle. See, who's the struggle with? Her sister. She's still trying to please her sister and her, and her husband and trying to outdo her sister. With my sister, and I've won. So she named him Nephtali. Verse 9. When Leah saw, watch this. She's like, oh, wait a second. I've stopped having children, and she's given her servant. Now I think I'm going to give my servant. I mean, you can't make this up. This is right here in the scriptures. This is wild. This, I told you this was a brother. This, he was torn between two lives. That's what my novel's about this morning. When Leah saw that she had stopped having children, she took her servant. Oh, honey, get on in there. 
<laughs> Brother Todd, you got somewhere to go eat today? Me and you go together. Zilpha, and gave her to Jacob as his wife. Oh, Jacob, he's just like, having a, he just, he's all over the place. Leah's servant, man, he wasn't shooting blanks. <laughs> Let me give you a clue here, young man. You're not shooting blanks. You got the real deal. Be careful. <laughs> That's good advice, parents. I'm giving you some free advice this morning. You better put your hands together. I'm taking one for you this morning. Y'all better give me some love up here. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and Leah's servant, Zilpha, bear Jacob a son. Then Leah said, oh, what a good fortune. And she named him God. Verse number 12. You, man, I've never seen so many people hooked into the scriptures like you. You're like, wow, I can't wait for the rest of this. Verse 12. Leah's servant, Zilpha, bore Jacob a second son. A second son. Then Leah said, watch this. This is so funny. How happy I am. Because I stopped having children. I had more than her in the first place. And my, now my servant's having more than her servant. How happy I am because I'm beating my sister. Right? The women, see, who's it about? Others. The women will call me happy. Right? She's not trying to please God. She's still trying to please women. So she named it Asher. During the wheat harvest, guys, this gets even deeper. Watch this, verse 14. During the wheat harvest, Reuben went out to the fields and found some mandrake plants. Now let me stop right there and tell you this. Mandrake plants were supposed to make, supposedly make people that were infertile more fertile. That's why they get mandrake plants. Now, I'm going to go on with the story. Which he brought to his mother, Leah. Because remember, she stopped having children, so now she's trying to get it going again. Rachel said to Leah, so Rachel stops and says, Hey, wait, Rachel, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Verse 15. But she said to her, Wasn't it enough that you took away my husband? Will you also take away my son's mandrakes too? Very well, Rachel said. Watch this. He can sleep with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. She's been sleeping with Jacob. But she says, you know what? If you give me the mandrakes so that maybe I can open up my wound too, you can go sleep with him now. Here goes Leah in there. Cross eyes and all. So when, watch this verse 16. This is good, isn't it? So when Jacob came from the fields that evening, Leah went out to meet him. Hey, bud. Hey, big boy. You must sleep with me. She said, I have hired you with my son's mandrakes. So watch this. Jacob said, come on in. And he slept with her that night. God, so verse 17. God listened to Leah, and she became pregnant and bore Jacob a fifth son. Then Leah said, God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband. So, so he, she named him Ishkar. Leah, verse 19, conceived again. Man, it's just opened back up again. And bore Jacob a sixth son. Then Leah said, God has presented me with a precious gift. This time my husband will treat me with honor because I bore him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Sometime later, she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dinah. Verse 22. Watch this. It took 22 verses in, 30, in the 30th chapter of Genesis that God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son and says, God has taken away my disgrace. And she named him Joseph and said, may the Lord add another son. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm coming to preach to you today, preach to you and tell you this this morning. That God's got something in everybody that he wants and that he loves. Leah, 
she was not very beautiful and she had cross eyes and her husband did not love her and she constantly tried to have children and was doing everything possible to try to keep his affections upon her she would do anything you get the, the feeling that she would do anything possible under the sun to make him love her but he never did but while Jacob was rejecting Leah God said I love you and there's something beautiful in you and we're going to read something in and 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 I'm going to go over to uh in the book of Matthew and I'm going to read to you some scriptures in the book of Matthew it says this this is the gene genealogy of Jesus the Messiah the son of David the son of Abraham Abraham was the father of Isaac so get that Abraham was the father of Isaac let's say that Abraham was the father of Isaac look at your neighbor and say Abraham was the father of Isaac Isaac was the father of Jacob tell your neighbor and tell your neighbor this Jacob the father of Judah and Judah was the son of Leah I'm going to read you the 17th verse. It says, Thus there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Leah, though she was not loved by her husband, she was loved by God. And through her lineage came the Messiah. And through the womb of Rachel, when it was finally opened up, God said, though you're beautiful on the outside and accepted by people because of your great beauty. I'm going to give you a son named Joseph that's going to save his other sons, including the Messiah, lineage of the Messiah, from famine and from destruction by placing him in power through your womb, Rachel. The lineage will be saved also. What I'm preaching about this morning is that there is, there is something inside of every one of you that God loves. People may not love you and they find faults with you. But don't ever forget that there's a great God above us all that puts something in every person. Look at your neighbor and say, God put something in you. Would you stand with me today and look at somebody else and say, God put something in you. God put something in you. Look at somebody else and say, God put something in you. Amen. Look at another neighbor and say, God loves you. Look at seven people and tell them, God loves you. No less than seven. God loves you. Come on, that's one. Come on, that's only two. Look at seven people. Come on. And tell them, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Amen. There's something in that God loves. Amen. It's not about what people think. It's about what he thinks about you. Amen. Come on and put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh, what a powerful word this morning. Amen. God loves you. Another club is not going to make the world happy. But God can find you in the middle of the club. Another, another sexual experience is not going to make you happy. God can find you in the middle of your loneliness. And God says, I love you. I want to be intimate with you in a way as God is a savior to his people. I want to have intimacy with you. God loves you. God loves you. Amen. You may never make your in-laws happy. They will never think you're good enough for their son or daughter. You might try the rest of your life to make your in-laws happy but I'm here to say God uses it all God uses every person and God loves you and God cares for you and God wants to bless you this morning amen how many want to be blessed by the love of God this morning amen amen would you come to would you grab that person's hand beside you would you come to the front of this church this morning you want to feel the love of God strong in your heart today would you come to the front of this church this morning with me today amen
with me right now today. Come on to the front of this church. This morning, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you today. people this morning that you live under constant comparisons. I know because I have had comparisons in my life. People compare me to other people and other preachers and who, whatever. And I know you live under the same thing because we, are, we live complicated lives. And you're, we're constantly trying to live up to people's expectations. Amen. We're, 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 we're beautiful on the outside but frustrated on the inside. Some of us are, don't have it all together on the outside, but we have expectations on the inside. And it's a mess. It's tough. It's tough to live up to what people think you should be. Amen. It's always a struggle to try to match up to what somebody dreamed about your life. But I want you to know that God loves you. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. He doesn't expect you to have it all together. He's there, he sees something in every person, whether you're Leah or whether you're Rachel or whether you're even Jacob. He sees something in you that he desires and that he wants this morning. I want to pray for you, pray for you this morning. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this incredible, awesome, tremendous, fantastic group of people. And God, I, I love them so much. They are just such a great people to be around. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing me with people that are friends, people that are incredible saints of God, prayer warriors. God, they're so concerned about their church and their city and their families. And you see the love of God in their heart. But God, there's sometimes we put expectations on our own selves and we live under comparisons of other people. We're trying to please our in-laws. We're trying to please our husbands or wives. We're trying to please our children. Our children are trying to please the parents. And God, it's a mess sometimes. And God, I just pray, Lord, that you just allow the love of God to open up in every heart this morning. And I, allow, I ask you to open up every mind today, Lord, that where they feel that, God, no matter where they're at in their life, that you truly love them and care for them. And, Lord, you've made an investment in them. You've made an investment in every person. And whatever road we come from, whether it's Leah or whether it's Rachel's road, you have chosen. You have chosen your people to be a benefit to your kingdom. One's going to have the Messiah. The other's going to have the child that protects the Messiah. And God, I pray you open up this wisdom and this knowledge in your people's lives this morning. And Lord, they can walk out of this building and put a smile on their face and 
let take all the burdens off their shoulders for your word says you carry the government and the burdens and the of the and the weight of the word upon your shoulders and god we give it back to you this morning we resign from being mr universe of the world and we just allow you to be that this morning we resign from being miss universe of the world it's a tough title and we just allow you to be that this morning and we're just going to be who you made us to be. And we're going to walk in your love. Though we're imperfect, through your blood, and through your stripes, and through your mercy and your grace, you have made us perfect, perfect in your sight. And though our sins were like scarlet, you have made them white as snow. You have loved us. You have chosen us. And you're using us. And we give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. Come on.